As a small business owner, have you thought business acquisitions are out of your league? Follow my video and I'll explain more. Our mission is to help as many small business owners just like you. So please click the bell to subscribe to be notified every time we produce new pieces of content and we can get our message out to more people. Business acquisitions for a lot of small business owners feel slightly uncomfortable. You think immediately, I can't do that because my business isn't big enough. Have I got the skills to do this? It's only big businesses that acquire. It's a myth. There are some really good opportunities out there for small business owners exactly like you. Follow this video and let's really explore this area. So what is a business acquisition? A business acquisition is where you go and buy another business. And now this can be normally in two formats. You may buy a, another company where you buy the shares and it becomes a subsidiary of your company if you're buying it 100%. It could also be an asset sale where you're buying the goodwill of the company. You're buying maybe the telephone number, you're buying the customer base. Uh, and this is known as an asset sale where you're not directly buying the company. So with a business acquisition, you can buy a company of any size. There's no set definition. But what you wanna do is when you're buying a business is look for something that adds value to your current business. Why would you buy a business? Number one, it's really quick. So if you're looking to go into a new industry and you purchase another business, you've already got a lot of systems, you've already got a lot of customers, telephone numbers, website, and they're all in place. It will get you there immediately. Or you may have an existing business and you wanna grow it more quickly. So if you go out and look for an acquisition, instead of you going out there marketing or upselling to your current customers, you can then go out there and go and get a whole load of new customers. So let me give you an example. An estate agent runs with two main income streams. They sell properties that are one-off transactions and they rent properties out for commission. So if you was looking to scale an estate agency business, you could go out there and purchase other estate agencies that have a really big rental book. So instead of you getting five, six new properties on a month, you could then go and find out another estate agency firm that has got 100. And you could then bolt that onto your business, which would see immediate growth. You could do this in lots of other industries too. It is massive in my industry, which is the accountancy market, where businesses sell again and again and again. Uh, accountancy uh, firms are very attractive because they have repeatable income. The traps. You may not be buying what you think you're buying. You may think you're buying something that's really nice and it ends up being a bit ugly. So when you're purchasing the business, ultimately you want to see a return on investment, but they may not be the initial uh, attraction. You may be buying a bit of technology. You may be buying a product that will add to your existing business. Now that technology and that product may not be very good. It may have been sold to you that it does this, 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 and it is rubbish. It may also be that you've seen uh, various accounts and you've seen various profits and then profits absolutely fall off a cliff. So when you're buying a business, you wanna make sure it's as close to uh, what the actual is afterwards to what you're buying beforehand. Now, when you're looking at the traps, there's ways that you could do to eliminate some of these traps. Normally that comes down into having really clear negotiations, really good advisors looking at the material and performing a, an exercise that's called due diligence. I will do a video on that later on in this series. But what you want to make sure is what you're buying, what you're perceived to be buying, is actually buying afterwards. And also, potentially, could that also be better? That if you're taking this business and another business, how do you integrate that together where you get more value? I find this really interesting. And it's a massive opportunity for small businesses that feel that this could be out of their reach. Okay, Michael, this all sounds really good. How do I fund it? Well, you can fund it in a few ways. If you've accumulated profit in your business and you've got good reserves, you've got cash there, you could use that money within your business to grow even further. Also, you could even use external finance for this, which could be in a form of unsecured or unsecured loans. And there are specialist providers in industries that look to finance business acquisitions because even after you take off all the cost of interest and all the finance fees that you've got, can you still make a return on that money? This is good business. Now I understand that people go, oh, debt's bad, as we've all been brought up with uh, saying you should never get yourself in unnecessary debt, but sometimes debt is not good or bad if it's used in the right way. And if you're using the, the debt to purchase a business, 
that after finance costs is gonna make yourself even more money and make your current business better, why wouldn't you do it? Now I'm not saying run in there and chuck money everywhere, I'm saying if you can find the right investment for the right finance and the right money, this could be really attractive to you. Again, I know a lot of small business owners that feel that this is out of their reach, but this is something that we help with clients day in and day out. So how do I do this? Um, you could do this by looking at trade online trade magazines and online directories that are there generally just to sell businesses. But also we've got a process that we help with our clients where we go out and research and look for potential acquisitions within their industry. Now one big thing to remember is when you're looking at uh, an acquisition, get something that's related to your business. Now I get as a business owner, we all love going to restaurants, but doesn't mean I make a good restaurateur. Because if the chef doesn't turn up, who's gonna cook the food? And with a restaurant as well, if you're not running the front of house well, you are potentially not gonna get as many customers. Although loads of business owners that I speak to would love to own their own restaurant. Run something that's in your trade. If you're an estate agent, could you look for other estate agencies to grow your business? If you're in construction or if you're into property, we're about to enter some really tough times. So have the liquidators got potentially businesses for sale uh, that are providing really good value? So with a business acquisition, it will get you there a lot quicker, but it will also give you systems that you need to encounter. Now, if you're buying a business ever, the most important part of a business acquisition is the implementation plan afterwards. So before you, when you're going through your due diligence process, you wanna make sure that you've got an implementation plan. That means how are you gonna implement and bed this into your own business with as least fuss as possible. You wanna make sure you retain all the key team members that you wanna retain. You wanna make sure that you're retaining all of the customers and how are you unlocking value within that business that the current business owners have not done. Now I hope you found this video of interest. And if you want to talk more about business acquisitions, click my calendar link below. Book in a 30 minute call with me. I'd be great to hear what your plans are. It'll be great to hear what your goals are. And I'll take on board any questions that you may have. I promise there'll be no pushy sales pitch. Now, if you're looking at acquisitions and business growth, follow our range of webinars. There's a link to our website. Um, we've got various ones on business growth and we've also got exit planning webinars that are live, that are designed just for you.